This week on NSFW, we're joined by the new host of i5 for the iPhone, Sarah Lane. She helps us play problem solvers. Also, we read a few pages from the upcoming Dark Knight Rises feature film script, an update on the Diamond Club book, and oh so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NSFW. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 136, recorded on July 17th, 2012. A rainbow of dazzling action. This episode is brought to you by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high quality website or blog. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs with automatic device scaling. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW7. See those two pins, Stacy? Yes. Well, today I'm going to stick them in you. Look at all the paper you wasted. <laughs> you count that as a fold? That's enough. Okay. Because I already see that it's not random. Don't jump to conclusions. Why isn't it random? You, I thought told you to write down random numbers. What do you mean not exactly? Can you well, see it or can't you? Well, you're right, but for the wrong reason. Sounds logical, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's wrong. <laughs> wrong. It's wrong? Wrong. Uh-huh. Wrong. That's right. Not right. That's how I was wrong? That's how you were wrong. What did he say? He said he's incapable of making a mistake, therefore I must be wrong. M-I-S-S. You don't have to say anything. The computer is saying them for you. Try not to hit the table. Try instead to hit that little thing, okay? You're seeing a beam of light. No, you're seeing the little pieces of dust. Well, you call them fingers. I'll call them propellers. You have to make the hole bigger than that, obviously. Haven't you ever seen a sliced banana before? <laughs> okay, all right, that's, that's good enough for me. And that means it's go time. That means it is go time for NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernets, the show that is nominally safe for work. Howdy, folks. My name is Brian Brushwood, and uh, I look a lot like a guy named Justin Robert Young. We were twins once in a different life, but now we were forced by a judge to be butlers. Isn't that right, Justin Robert Young? Yeah, it's called Butler Chat. Uh, welcome to Butler Chat with me, Mary Weather, and my friend uh, Edgar. Also, we're joined by the lovely Sarah Lane of Tech News Today. Welcome. Woo! Well, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, you know, it's almost hard to recognize you. What with your awesome, s- sweet internet that looks so clear and not like melty face on there. See, and you can move and everything. This is going to be a fantastic <laughs> episode. I can already tell. I feel the same. I feel the same. Thanks for having me back on after last time. Wait, what happened last oh. time? I got pixely. Oh, okay. I thought you, you were saying pixely. like the, the, that incident. <laughs> after uh, I let, made let me let me tell you <laughs> uh, a true story. So last week I was in Kansas City uh, for the Go game, and I wound up talking to a fan there, who, and I asked him like I ask anybody who's like a fan of NSFW what their favorite bits are, just their one favorite bit, and the one bit he said was problem solvers with Sarah Lane specifically. Specifically with Sarah Lane. So uh, and so that's the thing. Uh, it's a one-man focus group. If I'm in your city and we hang out and you tell me your favorite bit, I'm going to make it happen the next week. That's the standard I'm setting. And by the All way, right. no right. exaggeration. You can troll the hell out of Justin Robert Young. He will believe anything. You can be like, you know what? I've, I've really always wanted to see you do an experimental theater bit where you do nothing but a straight dramatic reading of the Constitution. We really think that'd be great. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Next week, wearing silly hats, founding fathers. Exactly. It's, we're, Alex Jones is going to be on. It's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, what are we up to today, Justin? Holy crap. Okay, number one, we have a jam-packed show. We are going to do, we're going to make that man's dream come true. We're going to do Problem Solvers again with Sarah Yay! Lane. The internet's favorite call-out bit. 
Uh, we are, we've got to be able to email in their problems. We're going to call them randomly, yell our advice, and then hang up the phone. They're not going to say anything except hello. Well, I mean, That's what's my favorite really, part about this. We don't have to deal with people. If you think about it, what is there to say? You know, we sit around, they're all like, thank you, you changed our lives. This is exactly what I needed to hear. We don't have time for that. We got to be out there solving the problems. Boom, 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 boom. We're going to be running through them. It's going to be great. Also, Sarah, uh, you... Now, as, as things have kind of moved toward the end, the final stages of our NSFW slash frame rate summer movie draft. Well, now uh, you say fantasy. that, but I only have one of my four movies even in theaters right now. So I'm about so to that, clean that, that's house. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're just time-wise, we're moving toward the end. But there are really only three people who have a shot at winning. And two of them are on this podcast, and one of them is not Brian. It's you, me, and Tom that really have any legitimate shot. Wait, what about Scott Johnson? Oh, no, he's, 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 no he's out of movies. He's done. He's got no more movies left oh, in him, and he's already in second right. place, Sorry, right? Sorry, Scott. Yeah. Better luck next uh, year. So, so uh, you have Batman opening this week. This is like the lynchpin of your entire strategy. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Essentially, essentially, what Justin wants to do is we want to turn this entire episode sort of into a campaign for The Dark Knight Rises because we want it to make as much money as possible. And then when you take first, we also want to take credit for having caused the movie to make so much money. Yeah. See, I like the way you guys think because... If I win, I win money. So that's my incentive. And also just <laughs> I'll feel smart. But it's really mostly about the money. But the two of you kind of get that warm fuzzy. We helped Sarah pay her phone bill this month feeling. See? And I really appreciate that. It's win-win. I also have changed my mind. I want to remind everybody that Dark Knight Rises will give you cancer if you go to the theater. <laughs> like, So you should probably stay away. You should probably not go to the theater and see this movie because it's pretty 100% going to give you cancer. Okay, all right, look, uh, let's let's go ahead. How are we going to promote it? Let's just dive right into this. Let's go ahead and promote it. Fine, okay, Brian. What we're going to do is is give you guys a little bit of uh, a taste of what you can expect with The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> we have a leaked page, a uh, couple pages of the script that we're going to read here tonight. We're talking old school radio theater style. We're going to have characters. We're going to walk through this whole thing. Now, uh, this this section of the script... Um, and it's odd because I didn't even know that Robin was in The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> but there are three main characters. You got the narrator, <laughs> Batman slash Bruce Wayne, and uh, and Robin slash Dick Grayson. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll take the narrator. And, and how about Sarah takes Batman? And well, no, I think you should take Robin, Brian. You think so? Yeah, you take Robin. I'll take the narrator. And then I'll fill in with silly voices. Okay, you realize that has you saying the most lines and then also every other line that's not Batman or Robin. <laughs> Okay, then you can be the narrator. But I mean, well, I, well, I don't know. Here, we'll just we'll just mix it up. We'll just we'll just we'll just switch it. We'll just switch it up as we go through. We'll, I'll tell you, we'll alternate. You and I'll alternate for every other line on there, unless. Well, no. How about we just pick goddamn things? You can be the narrator, fussy pants. Okay. All right. And then uh, this and then... is fun already. <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. Right. It's gonna be a good one. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, so, and so, the, and then you just want to do all the all the the single one liners as well. Well, do you? Yeah, do, do narrator and and Robin, and I'll do the what's it called? I'll do all the silly voices. All right. Let's done and done okay and now there's there are uh f photographic elements to this as well oh wait no we actually have a bunch of individual voices can we get uh can we, can we share the script with does jammer b want to participate or actually we got bonnie on what if we have bonnie do every female voice for the one-liners you want to do that <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was good a, God. that was her screeching no <laughs> <laughs> hold on let me let me actually there we go i that was me opening up two mics at the same time. There you go. So so we'll just have you do this. Now, here's the thing. I have not read this. You have not read this. Sarah has not read this. Uh, John Tilton, BCT, vouches for it. And he says that this will be, this is the legitimate script and it'll be a lot of fun. Radio drama style Batman. And the name of this one is, uh, actually, you know what? It sounds like we're supposed to not say, it sounds like the cover is a spoiler. So, so we'll just see what adventures happen. Does that make sense so far? Are you guys with me? No, we gotta but that's cool. Because I never really know what's happening when I'm on the show. Wait, so did you? Did, nor should you, and nor do we. Do, do you have that document open though? 
Yes, okay. I, I know who my character is. <laughs> okay, I just, I just want to make sure. Really know how what's I, going on right now. How am I going to read this? <laughs> hey, you can turn that so so we both can. See. Okay. There we go. There we go. There, there we go, and just spill that over. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Imagine we'll do some opening. This is the close thing we have to opening music. One morning, as Drake Grayson secretly wait, robbed. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can't get the we can't get the the, the Dark Knight or the the Batman music off YouTube. We can't get did some of the. I mean, come on. We got to sure. dress this up. We gotta make this a big thing. No, this that's is a good. big movie coming out. Everybody wants to know what happens. There's spoilers all over the place. We're gonna read you. These are these are actual pages from the Dark Knight Rises script. All right, no, that's, uh, we're, that's... We're, we're we're blowing the lid off this thing. Okay, here we go. So, um, all right, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start <laughs> things up here with the actual sounds. There used to be a great One morning, does <laughs> <alone laughs> Dick Grayson? Secretly Robin, the boy wonder, strolls through a busy thoroughfare. Help! Thieves! They're getting away! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Grace, oh, oh, oh no, must find some place to switch to Robin! But a moment later, as the getaway car comes roaring down the street... That's you, Bonnie. Oh. Look! That little girl! <laughs> what the? No time to change! Gotta rescue that youngster! With perfect grace and timing, the boy wonder flashes into action. Nice work, son. You all right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I cracked my elbow against this lamppost. Shortly, when a doctor arrives. The arm's not broken, but you'll be unable to use it for a week or so, I'm saying. <laughs> Gosh, that's too bad. And as reporters reach the scene. Yes. <laughs> Those thieves stole one of the new portable TV cameras, the ones used for broadcasting special events. I saw the faces, and I can identify them. Let's go home and tell Batman. A while later, in the mansion of Dick's guardian, wealthy Bruce Wayne, who's really the famed Batman. And the thieves who stole the valuable camera would have to run down a child, but for a youthful hero, Dick Grayson. He lost the use of his left arm temporarily, but saved a life. <laughs> it wasn't as big a feat as all that. My arm will be all right in a little while. But why should anyone steal a portable TV camera? They'd have no use for it and couldn't <laughs> sell it. There must be some other motive. Maybe I could spot the crooks in our crime file. But down in their secret back cave. No, their pictures aren't on our file. We haven't any record of them. <laughs> I can only see one motive for stealing that camera as preparation for some big crime to be staged where TV crews will be working. As Hold the, on. Wait a minute. Wait. I'm calling pause on this. What? That's what? the only solution that Batman has? Yes. So stole a TV camera? Dude, this is the actual script. For a big crime. Are you, are, you, are you questioning Christopher Nolan? This is this is the actual script, bro. I didn't write it. I, I don't know. Like, really? <laughs> I mean, like, you couldn't pawn it? How much is a TV camera? <laughs> Universal no. acclaim on Metacritic. This is a good movie. No, exactly. All as, right. the, as the pair switches to Batman and Robin. Oh, and uh, yeah, there we go. You mean they tried to disguise themselves as TV cameramen so they could get close to something valuable? That's what I suspect. <laughs> and from now on, we're going to watch every big event covered by television. You can identify those crooks if they turn up. Swiftly, Batman releases a unique strategy. But you've never done anything like that before. In this case, it's necessary. <laughs> we'll have to work fast, because tomorrow is when the big official welcome to the King of Zeronia takes place. And TV men will be there. So now at this point, there is a visual element. You can see this is these are storyboards that he's uh, he's getting ready to. Yeah, they haven't said what he's up to, but he's clearly up to something very big time, which uh, we'll find out here shortly. Uh, so the next day, at the scene of a big ticker tape reception. Look, there's Batman and Robin. But what happened to Batman? I've never seen him looking like that before. <laughs> <laughs> Body. He's wearing a red costume, but why? I'll check the TV cameraman in the car, Robin. <laughs> 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 While you watch... <laughs> <laughs> While you watch every face for the crooks you saw. <laughs> um, hey, look at Batman! A red costume! He's jumping into our car! <laughs> 
Just to check your cameras, a, a, sa a safety precaution. <laughs> and during an official welcome, all eyes focus not on the guest, but on Batman. The thieves aren't anywhere in the crowd, Batman. And the TV cameramen here all have proper credentials. <laughs> so this isn't why are they planned to strike. When the welcome is over, we can leave. Afterward. Why would Batman all of a sudden wear a red costume? He must have had some reason, but I can't figure it. <laughs> Later that day, when a familiar image clashes the sky. Ha, hey, Tom Jigglestock's here at the Bat <laughs> Signal. Police headquarters is calling Batman 15 past the hour. <laughs> Wonder if he'll wear that red costume again. The answer comes a few minutes later as the caped crime busters prays, prays to answer the, the urgent summons. With special controls we fitted the Batmobile, I could drive with my right hand alone. <laughs> Why? It's Batman wearing a blue costume now. Later, as newspaper men throng around the new Batman... Batman, can you tell us why you switched to a red costume and now to a blue one? Yes, you've never done anything like that without a reason. Why these colored costumes? It could just be I'm just tired of the same colored costume, you know? <laughs> I'm not giving my reasons yet. I'm certain there's some big story behind these colored costumes, but I can't figure it out. Presently, back in the back cave, I didn't see the camera thieves anywhere on the scene. Yeah, I'm sure they wouldn't steal such a camera, except to prepare a big crime. <laughs> we'll keep covering every big event that TV crews cover. And as the dynamic duel vigilantly watches for crooks, Gotham City continues to wonder. Hi, uh, there's a big crowd here at Mary and Marley, the famous movie star. And here comes Batman and Robin. What kind of costumes do you suppose he's wearing this time? Gold-colored costume this time. It's a dazzler. <laughs> no wonder everybody's watching him instead of Mary and Marley. Yeah, go on. You, you wore that costume deliberately so everyone would look at you, not at me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Marley. I didn't mean to spoil your welcome. And when the crowd disperses, Batman wearing those costumes just to attract attention. I can't believe it. Pretend I'm not here. <laughs> Neither can I. He must have some important purpose. Yes, that very same day as the pair scouts a big jewel and fashion show. We merely want to protect the valuable gems you're showing here. But everyone is now watching your brilliant orange costume. Please leave. <laughs> <laughs> when they depart... None of the thieves are present here either, though there were TV cameramen all over the place. We've got to keep right on watching every event till you spot those robbers. And at the next event, a crowded ship launching. Here comes Batman and Robin, and wow, look at the costume! <laughs> <laughs> Why is he doing it? Is it some sort of color code? In his latest eye-catching garb, Batman reaches the launching platform, just as... I christen the gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> the ship's starting to slide down the ways! Hmm, that cable below. Danger. Have to act fast. There's an axe a workman left. I think I can still make it. Hey! What's Batman up to? Keep keen eyes. I've glimpsed a hidden menace. Hmm. That cable, concealed by litter until just now. As the ship slides down, I'll pull over the whole platform. <laughs> and the axe whirls and bites in the nick of time. Then, as a grateful crowd surrounds Batman... Whoosh, crack! 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 Snap! Your prompt action saved us a bad accident, Batman! Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> we'll try to find out that next. Later. Again, I checked every person here today and didn't see any of the thieves that were after. <laughs> but they'd been here and had fixed the hidden cable to get us. They must know from the way we watch every event covered by TV cameramen that we're <laughs> after. <laughs> so they tried the sabotage to put us out of the way before they strike. Uh, it looks that way, and I don't like it. You're planning to cover the big sharpshooting contest at Gotham Stadium tomorrow. <laughs> Suppose they strike at you there. 
could be dangerous, all right. But we've got to look for them there, too. And we'll take precautions. So the next day, when Spectator Rifle Sharpshooting Contest gets underway... Oh, yay! The greatest marksman in the world competing in front of the television cameras! <laughs> Remember, Robin, your job is to identify those mobsters if they're here. A roar of surprise greets Batman's arrivals. Ooh, look at what he's wearing now. Uh, Batman, your target costume is rather staggering. Oh, now, don't let me hold up the contest we just came to look on. As the rifles of the contestants start blasting... <laughs> Still no sign of the thieves. If they're out to get Batman, this would be an ideal place. Suddenly... Bah! Look out! A bullet's hit Batman! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry. Uh, that was no accident. That bullet came from one of the roofs up there. But at that moment, to everyone's relief... That's all right. The bullet knocked me over, but didn't hurt me. I'm wearing a steel vest <laughs> under this costume. <laughs> Maybe we can still nab the man who fired the shot. As the duo speeds from the stadium... That's why I wore the target costume this time. Get it? Anyone trying to take a shot at me would aim at the bullseye in my protective armor. It's underneath that. But it shows that those gangsters will stop at nothing. <laughs> Upon reaching the rooftops... Too bad they had time to escape. But this desperate attempt to stop me proves we're getting close to whatever big job they plan. Trouble is, Batman, those brilliant costumes of yours make it too easy for them to strike at. No, I must wear those <laughs> costumes, Robin. Yes, it does seem the only way we could see, keep searching for those thieves. If we only knew what they planned to do with the TV camera. <laughs> and, the mobs and the mobsters who plots near a climax are equally puzzled by Batman. Ew, the camera's all ready, and it'll get us one million dollars. Ew! <laughs> If Batman doesn't catch on to our scheme, he worries me with these queer costumes of his. Why is he wearing them? <laughs> Ooh, beats me. Because he's only making our job easier. Whenever he shows up, he attracts every eye in the place. Ooh. That's right. No one will be watching us when we pull our switch at the money show tomorrow. <laughs> Next day at the fabulous Monies of the World exhibition, There'll be a big crowd when we open today. It's the biggest money exhibit ever put on. What really draw people is the one million dollars in cash. <laughs> Everyone wants to see all the money in actual cash. And with all these guards, it'll be safe. <laughs> Especially since Batman and Robin will do everything they can when we open. Wonder what color Batman will wear then. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> to, to that question, there's more than one answer. A rainbow costume. I give up. I can't see why on earth he'd wear such things. <laughs> Nobody can see why. But who cares? As long as he guards our exhibit. A little later, as TV newscasters arrive for the opening, every one of those cameramen is accredited. No sign of the thieves here. We'll go inside. Keep watching as the crowds enter. And finally, Robin's vigilant pays off. Batman, there's one of them. No doubt about it. He's one of the thieves who stole the camera. He doesn't have the camera now, but I'll grab him anyhow. <laughs> In an instant, Batman becomes a rainbow of dazzling action. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you've got in your pocket, pal, that's where it stays. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But search of a captured thief discloses a gas mask? Is that all he was reaching for? Great Scott. Don't you see, Robin? That's the answer to this whole mystery. Don't turn on your cameras. One of them is booby trapped. And after a speedy inspection... I thought so. This one would have floored the whole hall with tear gas when turned on. Then thieves with gas masks would have snatched one million dollars in spite of the guards. This altered camera must have been switched from mine during the confusion of setting up our equipment. Next instant, there go the two other crooks, Batman. I've got this one. They'll find no pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. <laughs> Only prison. <laughs> and so the police have taken the prisoners away. 
Bad man, your watchfulness prevented a crime again, but can you tell us why you've been wearing all these goddamn colored costumes? <laughs> no. No, I can't. This is the last one I'll wear, but why I did it must remain a secret. Later, as Bruce Wayne's loyal butler, Alfred, greets the duo. I'm glad you caught the rascals, sir. But why did you have to wear such gaudy garments? <laughs> You see, Alfred, Robin had to help me find those thieves because he only had seen their faces and could identify them. But if anyone noticed that as Robin, I couldn't use my left arm, they might remember the publicity about Dick Grayson's injury and suspect our identity. That is why I wore such colorful, eye-catching costumes. So everyone would look at me and not at Robin. And it worked! No one noticed me and my arm when all eyes were on Batman's bright costumes! But now that that's over, I can quick be in a peacock and become Batman again. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Ew! He was out of his gay! Ew! I used to be a gray in time. What was it? You can leave what's in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, whatever's in your pocket, mister. Don't whip it out and point it at me. <laughs> Just because I'm in a rainbow costume and all. <laughs> Don't go jumping to no conclusions, you thug. Uh, so was, yeah, that was that was interesting. That's the actual script from. Uh, yeah, that's the script from The Dark Knight Rises. So yes. if you guys still want to go see that movie opening up this week, <laughs> go ahead. There's no point. All right, look, let's take a break and thank our sponsors. Then we'll do we'll do we'll solve some problems. Who who do, do we have any sponsors? Because I don't. As far as I know, nobody's ever paid for a single episode of NSFW. Brian, shut your filthy mouth, because you know that Squarespace has paid for a lot of spots on this episode. Yeah, this, but, but uh, secretly, show. okay, look, but I mean, you and I, we've been through this. Uh, you're all like, oh, it's good that Squarespace pays. And, and this is, let's pull back the curtain. I'm like, Finally. every time you're like, oh, I'm good. ready. You're like, good. Squarespace is paying. I'm like, yeah, but Squarespace sucks. And you're like, well, they're paying us, so don't say that on camera. And I was like, yeah, but seriously, for like two years now, I thought Squarespace has totally sucked. Up until now, everything, the, everything you've experienced, you've heard us say about Squarespace up until this point was a lie. Just as we were getting our palms greased. They were just making a rain on us, and yep. we just danced like puppets. No more. <laughs> until Not no more. we saw the brand new Squarespace 6. Oh, my yes, gosh. folks. New Squarespace! Okay, here's the deal. From a technical perspective, the new Squarespace is an entirely new product with a different code base. It uses the latest web technologies, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript foundations for speed and flexibility for future development from a user perspective. The new Squarespace gives your website users the best mobile experience. You can go on websites and be like, man, this mobile experience is pretty good. Man, this mobile experience is kind of all right. Man, this mobile experience sucks. I hate it. I want to throw my phone out the window and break it because this mobile experience is so terrible that now I'm contemplating suicide. None of those are things that will be said when they go to your website. Your mobile experience will be the best. Uh, no, seriously, and, and this is not even a lie, actually. when we uh, Last night at 3 a.m., they launched this thing, and I got an email saying that Squarespace 6 had come out, and I've been sort of on the fence. I'm super happy with the website so far, but I've been flapping my gums about restructuring it to make it easier to see all my stuff, and and <clears throat> uh, that is what I love about Squarespace is that they make it so easy to make those changes, uh, but not a lie, and John Tilton will vouch for this. Like at 3 a.m. last night, I forwarded the email to him, and I said, "We seriously, it's time to upgrade the site, and I personally could not be happier that uh, Squarespace 6 is here because I mean seriously everything about the Squarespace ecosystem I don't have to know nothing I have become dumber and happier as a result of the way Squarespace ha handles HTML dude it also is faster and easier than ever it also has the best social media integration ever made by humans and it's exceptionally well designed you man imagine your life when like you got a website and you're gonna you're doing whatever on and the next thing you know, like every email you get, like at least like 14 of them a day are just random strangers saying, man, your website is exceptionally well designed. What's Here's, that going to do for your confidence? I'll tell you Maybe what. You're going to have a chance to go talk to that pretty girl that you've been too shy to talk to. Maybe you wind up getting married and having kids, and maybe one of those kids becomes a great warrior and defeats an ancient evil. <laughs> like this can all happen because Squarespace.com is new and it's in your life right now so okay real quick uh i i'm gonna throw something out and this doesn't come from me it comes from the chat room how about new slogan squarespace making your grandmother look like a better web developer than you since 2003. are you feeling oh. it 
See? Boom. A billion dollars. All right, look, we even we even give you codes, right? We got we got a code for NSFW. Give them a big old fat discount if they want to sign up. And don't forget, of course, you can get your two-week free trial. Just head on over to squarespace.com. They don't ask for a credit card or nothing. Yeah. Number one, enough. I mean, you need a credit card to sign up, but you want to try it out, man? You want to give it a little test drive? This is what kind of, you know, they're, they're bosses over there at Squarespace. They're just putting their junk right out there on the table and saying, go, man, take a swing. You don't need a credit card. You just take a test drive on this bad boy, and we'll see if you like it, because they know that you're coming back. NSFW7, though, is the code that you're going to have to use to get you 10% off of your first purchase for new Squarespace accounts for monthly and annual plans. So it's like the annual plan is, is a lot more than the monthly plan. Boom, 10% off that whole thing. Take a bite out of it. 10% off. And you know where that 10% goes? Into a nether spear that is just a different splinter universe. Actually, it goes, it goes nothing... into some very delightful, colorful costumes that you're going to see in The Dark Knight Rises coming out this weekend. Exactly. Listen, NSFW7 is what you need. That's the offer code at checkout, go buy a year. You wanna know what? At the end of that year, you're gonna say, God damn it, I'm more happy, I'm, I'm thinner, I can run a, uh, I can run a 5K, uh, <laughs> you know, I can do pull-ups now, all because of Squarespace, new Squarespace, man. It's gonna make your life better. You're gonna fight crime when you get a Squarespace site. That's a fact, like Agnes, Agatha, Jermaine, and Jack. Yeah, all right, look, let's solve some other problems. We already solved people's problems with how difficult it is to code your own HTML website, but now we're gonna solve bigger problems. We asked you guys out there in the ether to send us your problems to nsfwshow at gmail.com, and we are gonna solve them. If you've never seen problem solvers before, we don't have time to sit around and hear your problems again after we already read them once. We're gonna, we're gonna work out our strategy. We're gonna call you the moment you pick up, it's advice all over your face like a cream pie, and then boom, doors closed, and we are gone. Any questions? No. Are you asking me? No, actually, I it's, said it's best not to overthink these. That's what I've learned. Yes, you and me both. So here's uh, what, what's our first problem, <laughs> Justin Robert Young? Oh, okay. And also uh, remember, one of us is going to restate the problem. Yep. One of us is going to give a solution. Yep. And one of us is going to give a witty rejoinder. Yep. That will just be like the slam dunk. At the end, when we hang up the phone, yeah, and, and then we'll switch and then those we'll roles. Five thousand. But let's go ahead and uh, let's call Ryan. Ryan writes: <laughs> The other night, I was told by multiple people that I am quote the single friend. <laughs> While that is true, I am single the majority of the time. I'm still uncertain of how to take this. Should I be offended? Uh, man. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restate the problem. <clears throat> All right. I'll give him some advice because I, I, I got this thing. I know exactly what's up. I okay, do believe, I can, uh, I can, I I think Ryan I can probably, is, like, is a lady. It up at the end. Yeah. What, what's that, Justin? I do believe Ryan is a lady. Oh, Correct. okay, good. Then I'm thinking of a different Ryan, which means I got to rethink my advice. Yeah, Lady Ryan. Hmm. The Lady Ryan. Are, are we sure? I'm positive. <laughs> okay. We right. know for right. a fact. I feel like I feel Actually, like why don't my, you give? Why don't you give? My response is the same. Uh, are Are you sure? What? Why don't you sure you don't want to give advice? Because it's lady, lady advice. Do you have advice? I mean, I have bad advice. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, I'll that's, give advice. That's what we do. We solve. We solve problems, not necessarily yeah, give listen, good advice. No one said <laughs> how we solve them. It's not like solving them well solvers you know it's not like your life's gonna be better we're just solving the problem yeah Boom. i mean look right. at me do you think i have good advice for women no all right <laughs> no i oh, don't stop it stop it all right here we go here we go are, are we ready all right. uh oh and you know what uh, it occurs to me you i have no way to know i guess i should have had this thing open i was waiting for you to hand feed me the freaking number on here and i realized that that's not possible because um yep there it is got it all right, I am. Yeah, I'm going from. I'm going down up, just for for the record. Got it. Now I am totally good, and we are totally good, and we are calling. Let's see. Let's see. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Hello. Problem solvers. So all your friends think you're single because no one will ever love you. I've got some advice for you, Ryan. You started eating a lot of garlic, not just a little bit, a crap ton of garlic at every meal. Slather it on you when you take a bath at night. That way, you own the singleness. Nobody wants you, but you don't care. Dude, buy yourself a and bone, and you're never alone. 
Problem solved. See? Felt good. Off to a good start. See? That was a, that was a good one. Changing lives. I that hope was... everybody now You're welcome, dead. Ryan. <laughs> Life is going to get really good. How this works. <laughs> Oh, ben Franklin, Jesus! <laughs> All right, keep going, keep going. Let's let's we're doing great. Let's let's keep it rolling. Go for it. This one comes from Kelsey. Kelsey writes, "I can't get the reading rainbow theme song out of my head. I've tried to listen to other songs that are just as annoying slash catchy, such as Call Me Maybe or Friday, to get it out of my head, but nothing works. I'm getting desperate, and I might need to listen to Katy Perry or that Boodle Deedle Do cover of Rolling in the Deep by some idiot. Help!" <laughs> So this, uh, this lady needs to get Reading Rainbow out of her head. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, I don't mind giving, giving ad, uh, ad wait, what do you got? Witty Rejoinder. All I right. call Witty Rejoinder. All right. Well, then that means uh, that, means that uh, by default. Uh, I, can, I can state the question. Summarize. All right. Yes. Got it. <clears throat> uh, all right. Got it. All right. And so then we will give a call to her right now. And What's her name again? Uh, Kelsey. It is Kelsey. Kelsey. Wait for it. Uh, hello? Problem solvers. All right, Kelsey, I hear that you can't get the Reading Rainbow theme out of your head. You're thinking of going the Katy Perry route or even Carly Rae Jepsen because you're so frustrated. But what I don't understand is why you would ever, for even one second, want to disrespect Commander Jordy LaForge so bad as to get that song out of your head. What, do you hate America? When you shoot yourself in the eye, the music dies. <laughs> Problem solved. You're welcome, Kelsey. We're so oh. happy to have helped. Problem solved. See, I think people are just really getting the hang of this now. Oh, this I guess is... they're not prank calls because people have given us their numbers. Uh, by the way, Patrick DeLanti. These are the... real problems. <laughs> Patrick DeLanti in the chat room says, butterfly in the sky, <laughs> shoot yourself in the eye. <laughs> the musical God damn it, that was a better line. <laughs> God damn it. Our next one comes from Ryan uh, A. This is a boy, Ryan. All right. <laughs> I had Ryan's ankle. Not okay. I had ankle surgery in January. My cable tech. I'm a cable technician, and work on my feet all day. The doctor set limitations because I'm still in pain, but the boss says I can't work with limitations. My long-term disability pay is down to 50 percent. Money's getting tight. I do have $32,000 in, in a 401k do, uh, 401k though, what do I do? All right. So financial so, advice. So yeah, so I guess I'll restate it. And I guess, uh, Justin. I got advice. You got advice? I haven't done advice yet. And then, and then uh, okay. you could put a button on top. Sarah, you ready to do this? Yep. Boom. Give a call to Ryan. And I actually know which Ryan this is. Morpheus? So what? Your ankle hurts and you can't work. You're running out of dough. You want to know what to do. Ryan, here's what I want you to do. I want you to roll over that money into a Roth IRA and then set yourself a very small portion that you can manage your life by. If all else fails, you have a third leg. Learn to use it. Problem solved. This is good. Listen, maybe it's just this moment. I feel like this could be its own show. I feel like we just need to pitch this as its own show. No horse apples nonsense at the beginning with the Batman thing and other nonsense. I feel like we could just do this for an hour every single day. We can syndicate it across the country. Uh, look, I mean, there's a reason you wanted to marry the internet, right? I mean, and here we are. <laughs> hey, man, let's improve more lives. What else we got? All right, this one comes from Eric. For my capstone project in college, I've been assigned a group of four people to work with. Most of these people are cool, but one of them I absolutely loathe. She is late to every meeting and comes up with more excuses than the Pope. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I don't know what, apparently the Pope is like Excuse McGee. <laughs> He's king of the excuses. 
My name is Pope Excucius. Um, how can I'm I sorry, survive I'm late. this group? I'm sorry, I'm late. I had a flat tire. Also, I had surgery, and my brother-in-law passed away. My power went out. I'm sorry, I couldn't return your email. I'm the Pope. <laughs> Pope Excucius. All right, go ahead. Uh, all right, so uh, how can I survive this group for another four months? Uh, a woman that's late over and over again. I'll, I'll restate the problem. All right, and then uh, Sarah, you want to give some some advice? I'll I'll give some <sighs> advice. That's cool. I'll give. I'll, no, it's okay. I'll give advice. I'll give advice. Okay. All right. So, and now we're gonna give this person a call. We're gonna talk to Eric. Here we go. Improving lives. Excuse me, indicated. <laughs> Hello? Problem solvers. So you're working with a girl in your capstone group that gives more excuses than the Pope's take poops in the woods. Sounds like you gotta get a new job, dude. You're gonna go nuts. <laughs> Set fire to her house. <laughs> Problem solved. So what else have we got, Justin? Uh, all right. Uh, this one comes from Corey. I have a huge problem for you. As a fellow Laserdisc enthusiast, I'm sure you can understand the horrible situation I'm in. My Laserdisc Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back has been scratched to smithereens by my cat. How do I solve this issue? I got advice. I have the witty rejoinder. <laughs> okay. All right. And I'll, I'll give the advice if you want to, uh, Sarah, if you want to sum things up. And 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 just so I'm clear, uh, there's a cat that's scratching the laser disc. Laser disc, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric, yeah. right. understand. Yeah, we could do this. We could do this. Hello. Problem solvers. Hello. Uh, what up? Wait, what wait. up, laser disc dude? I heard that you've got some issues with your cat who's scratching up your laser discs that mean more to you than life itself. Yeah, which I gotta ask you seriously, bro. Laser disc, let it go. If you get lazy, bro, let it go. <laughs> I love laser disc. Punch your cat in the face. Problem solved. <laughs> Pretty sure it was a wrong number. <laughs> I am almost certain that we called a wrong number. I think somebody trolled us and gave us a wrong number. <laughs> That's not nice. Although, I mean, what a gift. Really. You know, a gift <laughs> out of nowhere you, to get a call like that. Real, real quick, let's press pause on everything. Could you no one ever forgets that call. Yes. If you randomly get yes. that call, that call is <laughs> never forgotten. It's like it's like I was just sitting there. I was in the middle watching reruns of House, and all of a sudden, like a superhero brigade shows up to offer me advice to somebody else's problem. It was the weirdest thing. Dude, seriously, like, my mom once told me that one night she picked up the phone and there was just a random, it was a prank caller that just kept saying, your mother, your mother, your mother, your mother. Like they just kept saying that over and over and over again. And that stuck with me. Like she told me that as like a five-year-old boy. And I remembered that forever. That will be, that call that we just played, that's the wrong number, will be in their family for generations. Well, and as the, as the chat room points out, uh, hey man, at least now he knows what to do if that happens. So it's like, sure. you know, it's like if he's got a laser disc and a cat scratching it up, if, if, if he's got cat scratch fever for the empire, then boom. Points All right, we got, we got time for another one? Cat head. <laughs> yeah, we got one more. Uh, this one comes from April Ness. Uh, I, I shouldn't have given her full name, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give her email address Sorry, as well? <laughs> April writes, I have to change into scrubs at work in a locker room. So there happens to be a fellow worker of mine that has a smelly problem. Her body. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to puke sometimes. And it's not just when she's changing. Even after she leaves, the smell lingers. It's not a B.O. smell. It's a rotting, sweaty, garbagey, what the hell have you been doing with your life smell? The worst is when you accidentally breathe it with your mouth. It's disturbing. I can't be like, yo, deodorant, use it. That's mean. 
What do I do? I actually, I actually have the solution on this one. This is not even a lie. This is a real thing. And in fact, it's something that I encountered myself. So yes. I'll, I'll restate the problem then. Uh, Sarah, you want to bring us on home? I will try. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's all right, man. We're doing good. We're, we're changing lives here. We're making the world a better, less smelly place. Wait for it. Help me. Problem solvers. So you learn when the lady who smells like a hot pile of garbage covered in garlic and AIDS. Yeah, man, look, I actually deal with this. I have to ride on a lot of planes, and every so often you get a super smelly woman or man next to you, and that is why, no lie, I actually have a, a, a contact lens case with freaking Vicks Vapo Rub. Doodle -be -doodle -loop, doodle -loop, and you don't smell the mojo no mo. <laughs> Problem solved. I think what made it is that is that you have Robo Skype right now, Sarah. So it's like we just got random like angry Cylon on there. Can can you say something real quick? Hi. Yeah, no, we got Robo Skype. Can no, can you switch, can you switch can you, your mic? Uh, you input switch back it back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on in here? That was awesome. How's this? Yes. Boom, we're back. But I'll tell you what, you picked just the right moment. You, uh, the, you, you had theatricality on your side, like Batman and Batman Begins. It, it's and what it worked for you. It's uh, what well, she went totally. She went Bane. <laughs> she gave that advice with the robot exactly. voice and attacked that us. That smelly lady's punishment. <laughs> <laughs> There's a storm coming. This is April the weirdest thing woman. ever right now. This whole thing is so weird. Okay, so let me <laughs> let's take let's take a moment. Have we told Sarah? Do you know about our shenanigan? Because we we got to check in with our with our overarching um, plan to get famous based on other people's hard effort. Yeah. Do you know about our secret plan? No. So we got a book, Sarah. Um, we are writing along with our, our audience in chat realm. Uh, Brian released Scam School Book Two and realized yes. that the top 15 books in all the iTunes uh, top 15 were all, because of the popularity of Fifty Shades of Grey, erotic fiction. So what we decided to do, and this is actually uh, an echo of an older uh, thing that worked in the late 60s, we decided to have all of our uh, members of chat realm who wanted to participate write a chapter in a book, an erotic fiction book that is purposely poorly written, uh, but does nothing but include hardcore banging. Right. Uh, and we're going to release it under a nom de plume uh, in, and we'll tell you there's a change in the date. We'll tell you when it's going to come out. Uh, but we're going to release it and we're going to see what happens because we can definitely crack it into the top 10, but we're going to see if our trashy poorly written erotic fiction can in fact become really genuinely popular well and keep in mind erotic. like our goal is to do things like we, we kind of don't even care what the words are as long as there's lots and lots of of banging but but we want the cover to look like those 50 shades of gray because that's the other thing too is by being so popular 50 shades of gray has has started a new style of how books look like if you look at the rest of the top 10 they're all clearly modeling their covers on 50 shades of gray so we want it to look like one of those 50 shades of gray books and we got this fantastic cover design for the books called the diamond club which is the mysterious club uh it's written by patricia harkins bradley and it's about a jilted lover who uh whose startup is is finally getting or, or someone else's startup her boyfriend's startup and then he marries some other chick, and as revenge, she goes out and has sex with everyone she can at the Diamond Club. Uh, here's what we were worried about when we pitched this thing. We're like, uh, look, Chat Realm is really great with spur of the moment, explosive opportunities. You know, want to get something up on Reddit or whatever. They're they're your go-to people. But we didn't know whether or not a long-term process, like each one of you write a chapter with lots and lots of sex in it about her having revenge sex with a series of different characters. Uh, we didn't know if they'd follow through. We didn't know <clears throat> if we'd really even have enough to, like, what would you say, how many words do you think you need to have to call it a book? Like, at what point do you stop calling it a novella and you're like, all right, it's a real book? Um, I don't know. Uh, 300 words? 300 words, sure, is a book. <laughs> how about 120,000 words so far on this thing? Oh. 
Oh my. If you go to to That's a lot of nookie. <laughs> yeah. Oh hell yeah. Uh, so here's what we need to do. Now no, originally we were talking about releasing the book next week and uh, and and we can't do that. Why not, Justin? Uh, two things. Number one, we want to make sure uh, we need just a little bit more time to clear things out. So uh, there's a lot of chapters in the book that are right now the writing is locked down. We're done creating. You know, at this point we're shaping, we're editing. So we need people to go into the doc and start flagging chapters that are either not finished or just complete. You know, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which I'm sure is a sex act in and of itself, but uh, is just complete nonsense. It's just gibberish. So we need to eliminate those chapters uh, and just let's get the honest to goodness, poorly written yet bang filled. Right. Well, it, it's like it's like the, the majority of the book. Uh, I, most people, I think, will believe that a poorly written book will hit number one. Uh, yeah. but not too many people are going to believe that an incomplete book is going to hit number one. They're going to smell a trap when it's that. And keep in mind, our whole goal is to trick just one lonely housewife into downloading this and seeing just all the five-star reviews and uh, and being like, oh, it's as good as all the others. And then well, maybe, maybe no. it turns out it is. Brian, my, my goal with this is for one lonely housewife that has nothing, no idea what this is, to get buy this on, on their Kindle – and then subsequently take a long, hot bath <laughs> reading our book. Right, if exactly. If that happens, that will be the uh, the the only thing that I, I, I hope is achieved with this. Yeah, okay. And keep in mind, we're only going to sell it for 99 cents, but we do want everyone to buy it. But here's the important thing. We yes, need to and set also, up... I just want to point out that we're getting all the money. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the pennies there <laughs> ever were. So, so here's the thing, though, is is we need to uh, – I know that Kuhan made a document that breaks down all the characters and has all the chapters logged and says how complete they are and that. I don't know if we have a link to all of that stuff because um, I know that the document itself is locked, but I believe you can read it, although I'm trying to log in right now to uh, bit.ly slash the Diamond Club book, and it doesn't look like it's opening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it over to chat room if you guys could get me links. Oh, here it is. It's loading right now. So yeah, so so we actually have the book here. When you do a word count, it's got 120,000. You can read all the chapters at bit.ly slash the Diamond Club book. So we just need, if you guys want to divvy them up or if somebody wants to read the whole thing beginning to end, then uh, you can uh, j go to Kuhan's doc and just say which ones, because some of them say stuff like, you know, character name in all caps, where it's like, we got to put the character name in there or, you know, job title in all caps where it's like right now it's like structure that's like swiss cheese and we got it we got to fit girl you are case wait girl you're crazy you're talking to the mf and wizard i can give you all the pez dispensers with pez candies in the mf and world <laughs> <laughs> can you make them all come out of your lovely manliness what no then we have to break up i'm sorry <laughs> so so <laughs> so, <laughs> so obviously we have a hit here Hey, hold on. Just then, a huge stargate opened up in front of me. I tearfully parted with Captain Count Vampire Wizard. <laughs> okay, so that would be what we're going to have to tag as, as being not, yeah, not what we're looking it. for. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys could do us a favor, all of you get together, go to bit.ly slash the Diamond Club book. Uh, we got one week. You got seven days from now. We got to patch this thing up, and it is completely locked and edited one week from today, right? Yeah, and and two weeks from today. Actually, no, less than two weeks from today because we have to move that show to Monday, right? Yeah, well, right? we're going to see about that. We should be able to, I think so, though. But on the 30th is when we're planning to have everybody buy the book. So on July 30th. And, and we've said this before, we're gonna repeat it, and I apologize that we're being redundant. This is, this is your annual dues. Annual dues to belong to the Diamond Club are 99 cents. And I don't care what kind of ax you have to grind with Apple, you're gonna give Apple 22 cents of the dues in order to make this thing hit number one. It's number one or bust, because I'm telling you, we're gonna, we're gonna hit it to number one, we're all gonna do five star reviews, and then we're gonna start seeing the one star reviews popping in as Lonely Housewives realize this isn't nearly as good as Fifty Shades of Grey. And then we start uh, seeing five star reviews and, for people we don't know. And by the way, uh, Power Hour songstress, Ali Spagnola has already promised in the chat room 
that she uh, is going to take a long, hot bath while reading uh, <laughs> the Diamond Club book. So we already have celebrity involvement. Uh, as featured on the Fox News channel, Ali Spagnola is, is already in on this. So, so and we'll, done. we'll see. So you know, again, I think this is going to be a big, a big thing. Uh, Sarah Lane, listen, you've seen so many of these these uh, online media trends kind of kind of blow up uh, where, where do you think we're at do you think we got something here we, we what do we need to to make this a big thing um i mean sex is universal um sex is timeless uh it is? sex uh connects people uh globally so yeah. i think you've got a hit kind of separates um, them and then connects them again and then separates them and connects them again sometimes <laughs> for the purposes of the book there will be a lot of connecting Sure, so exactly. I I like it. I like this little I, I like this Diamond Club idea. I know that the Diamond Club is your you know your little winky wink thing, but it kind of works yeah. for those lonely housewives too because they don't know what's they won't know what hit them, and maybe they'll end yeah. up really liking the book. Maybe this is going to be the next big thing in sexual fiction. Is well, just and here's the crazy thing. Crazy shit. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no. Crazy uh, belt, stuff. Belt yes. For Sarah. That's that's uh, bing, bing, bing. I'm just saying this. Uh, everybody whose chapter is maybe not finished right now, don't be worried if it's cut, because it will be included in the sequel, Hard as Diamond. <laughs> there you go. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, man, I don't even know what to – okay, so, again, your marching orders are you got uh, one week – or, sorry, two weeks for today was when we're going to sell it, but you got one week to participate in the edits, and we need people to read this thing. It's gigantic, and we need people to give honest feedback on which one you're like, you're like okay, this is not a real chapter. This is a real chapter. we got to edit this thing down, and I know that Kuhan, if you, if you tweet at Kuhan, K-U-H-A-N, he can give you access to the document where you can write the notes. You can't change the actual book document. We're going to have John uh, Tilton take care of all that. Uh, and then we're and then we're totally good to go. Man, do we have any other housekeeping, Justin, or is this an episode? Uh, well, I mean, of course, we have to point out that number one, uh, Sarah, can you tell me about your new iPhone show that you're launching here <gasps> on Twit? When is I that bet happen? you'd like to know about it, wouldn't you? I would. I want to know. How did I yeah. not know you were launching an iPhone show? Well, you know how sometimes things at Twit just kind of happen. Um, this is one of those things. Uh, before, I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> well, we obviously have to do a little bit better promotion then, so everybody knows what everybody else is doing. But um, no, this is actually a real thing. On Monday, uh, July uh, 23rd, uh, we're going to shoot the first episode of i5 for the iPhone, which is, I don't want to call it a countdown show. It's just five cool things that are related to the iPhone each week, and it's going to be really short, kind of short and sweet, which is as much as the programming on Twit Network as a whole is absolutely wonderful, I would not say there's any brevity in any of these shows. So I'm just going to try to do something different. Yeah. Kind of a fun experiment so that you can take 10 minutes, get five cool things, whether it's apps or, or um, accessories or interesting news stories or stuff you should be thinking about. Because um, I'm a real iOS fan and um, it just it made sense because Leo and I already do a weekly show about um, iOS, but it's focused on iPads called iPad Today. Some of you may have seen it. And what we end up doing is covering really cool iPhone apps that aren't for the iPad because they're so cool. Where else are we going to talk about it? So yeah, sure. it well, seems like a show that that we need. And, and of course, you know, the iPad's able to use any any yeah. app for the iPhone as well. But I, I think you're I think you're right. I think that this is a really good addition to the Twit lineup. And I think that uh, I, I like I like your use of the word brevity. I think that's exactly what uh, what we need more of. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, or just it, it, it'll, it'll be fun to try it. So that's what we'll be doing uh, Monday. We shoot at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern. But I do feel like it's a show, I say this about iPad Today also, even though iPad Today, a lot of people watch us live. It's a show I think that's going to be better after it's out of the edit room, because you'll have product information and pricing and URLs and just a bunch of stuff that we're not going to be able to do live because we're going so quick. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're interested in that stuff, I hope you guys subscribe and, and uh, give me feedback. Awesome. All right, well, here, well, let's... Let, me, let me just say this. Number one, uh, the iPhone is going to be, uh, again, like it always is in the fall, a gigantic story when the iPhone 5 comes out. Uh, obviously, a billion people have iPhones and a ton of people that are watching this show. Sarah is, I mean, if, if, you, if you are not, if you're one of the eight people who are not a viewer of either iPad Today or The Social Hour or TNT, 
Uh, you know, you need to realize Sarah is super amazing. This is going to be a absolute killer hit show. So as soon as this goes live, make sure you throw it in your iTunes subscription feed or wherever else you find podcasts. It's going to be a total killer. Yeah, uh, we should take a quick moment as well. Uh, Ali Spagnola is promoting her new, uh, of course, you know. The hot creator, bath lady? The, the hot bath lady. It's <laughs> hot bath in the city is her new <laughs> is her new uh, venture, <laughs> and it's up on Reddit. Uh, I forget, somebody will give me the URL to throw up on the screen, but basically um, she would love a little push from Chat Realm because uh, she's trying to do a nationwide power hour drinking Con, uh, uh, I was yeah, gonna say contest, yeah, you'll, you'll, but you'll remember her as she did her Power Hour episode right before uh, South by Southwest. She flew down uh, early so she could play our party at South by Southwest. It was an amazing time. Uh, so go ahead on on over to there. C H T T R R L M dot U S slash Power Hour. So it's like Chat Realm dot U S, but without any vowels. Chat realm dot exactly. us slash power hour. You have to say it because she's from Pittsburgh. You got to say power hour. Power hour. All right, power here let's 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 you check gotta in. Say the power hour. Let's check in with our movie draft minute. Welcome to movie draft minute for the week of July sixteenth. Yeah, who's number one? I'm your host Roberto Viegas. What's this? A new challenger for first place. Who could it be? Here comes week seventeen. Sarah Lane remains in sixth place with thirty-seven point two million dollars. Veronica Belmont's in fifth place with two hundred two point two million dollars. Brian Brushwood's in fourth place with six hundred one point two million dollars. Tom Merritt drops to third place with six hundred twenty-nine point five million dollars. Scott Johnson drops to second place with six hundred thirty-six point eight million dollars. And in first place, with Ted bringing in $22.1 million this week, The Amazing Spider-Man bringing in $35 million this week, Ice Age Con Eldrift bringing in $46 million this week, bringing his total to $685.1 million. It's Justin Robert Young. Ladies Woo! and gentlemen, that is your Movie Draft Minute for the week of July 16th, 2012. Wow, dude. All right. here. No, I'll tell you what, uh, Sarah Lane, seriously, cannot thank you enough. Every single time. Yeah, I think you're the only guest we've ever had who's betting a thousand. Every time you come on is pure magic, and uh, you should come on Frame Rate sometime. We want to have you there, but you're busy. I want I want to be there. Yeah, I told, Tom was bugging me about it the other day, too. Like, didn't we talk about you being on the show and helping out with some cord cutting tips and... I just said, as soon as we get this iPhone show off the ground, I am totally 100% there. Awesome. Well, it'll be awesome to have you on. Uh, Justin, of course, um, uh, what do you got to promote, sir? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Justin R. Young on Twitter. Weird things, eye tricks, the same old crap. Uh, but really, all I'm focused on, folks, think Diamond Club book. Think yep. Diamond Club book. Edit it if you can, uh, and then get ready to buy it. It's going to be an all-out goddamn free-for-all on the 30th. July 30th is when we're gonna blow this mother effer up. Man. And by the way, and, and you mentioned you mentioned the weird things. This is a really good. If you've ever heard of weird things but never thought to jump on it, this is the week to do it. It was a really good episode. We were in top form. Andrew Main was amazing. We had guests. It was a truly magical experience. Oh, and by the way, this band that's playing right now plays live next week. Next week, get set, go. It's gonna be amazing. One year anniversary of the breakout. Simon Club, die to fire. See you next Tuesday. Oh, NSA. W.